Hey everybody, welcome back. So today the topic, real estate prices soften in the real estate arena due to the recession. And yet we're saying that uh, really, we're gonna see more millionaires. And you're probably asking, what? How is that even possible? How is it that a recession can actually create more millionaires? We're gonna go over that. We're gonna give you some tools, some things to look at. Uh, I'm gonna have uh, Matt and Vikas post some links for you guys so you can have a better idea of what we're talking about. Again, there's no selling here. I'm just gonna change your perception, all right? That is the goal so you can make the best business decision for you and your family. Because there are a lot of folks out there that are saying, oh my gosh, George, it's a real estate market. Oh, uh, uh, it's going down, it's, it's, it's sinking. It's like, it's like moving the deck chairs around on the Titanic. And I'm like, what are you talking about? And they're like, well, don't you hear all the national news and some of these folks are saying, oh my gosh, real estate is going down. It's ah. And I'm like, no, uh, that, that's not even happening on a national level. There are certain areas that, you know, naturally have a couple of hiccups here and there. The, however, is we're one of the, uh, the five sweet spots across the United States. How is that possible? I mean, if you watch the history of my channel and go back, you will you will see. And in fact, it's so funny because I was chatting with Shafat and he's uh, he's like, you know, George, it's pretty uncanny how accurate your channel is. <laughs> I said, well, I've been doing this for a little while and I, I don't inflate numbers. And I know that there's lies, there's damn lies and then there's statistics. But when we use all of the metrics consistently every single week so that you can see a true picture of what's going on so you can make the best business decision for you and your family well that's the whole point of this channel so remember subscribe and share when you share this link other people who need really good information including your you know if you know somebody who's looking up at uh, buying or selling or a first-time home buyer heck even watch the video on how to effectively give funds to to your children so you don't have taxes and and how to how to uh, best navigate that path it's free there's no selling here it's just giving you great information you know it's so funny because actually uh, Matthew Gardner uh, Windermere real estate economist super smart guy right along with uh, Lawrence Yoon so uh, Matthew said, he says it's in a crisis. He says home sales increase month over month, but the rise in listings is caused from uh, is causing prices to soften, soften in the sense that we're not heading up. He didn't say that they were going down. It's just that they're softening. Just because butter softens doesn't mean it goes <laughs> right. It's just getting a little bit softer. Sellers are becoming a little bit more negotiable we're we're done with that crazy two-year sprint and we're now going in in our normal healthy path for appreciation and growth he says the the bear market is highly exaggerated because there's a lot of folks saying oh yeah it's falling back he says look man it's highly exaggerated he says the market is simply reverting to its long-term average as it moves away from the artificial concern or conditions caused by the pandemic yes without a doubt probably the most unique market in my 30 years of history practicing real estate okay but here's the thing now and, and i say this quite a bit and the key for you guys to understand is this all right market in real estate invest investing is a perception all right so because it's no longer a mathematical inflation okay it's a perception of inflation, so it's a self-fulfilling prophecy, meaning that it is in your head. Yes, there are higher prices at the pump. There are higher uh, costs of food and goods, which always fluctuate, okay? And yes, we're seeing that, that ramp up a little bit more today, but that doesn't mean, it does not mean you start hoarding all your cash and put it in your pocket. In fact, that is the absolute worst thing you can do right now because the, 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 they say that you know that uh, you know the that you know what is it? It's uh, something to bold the uh, you know um, I'm drawing a blank on it. Anyway, uh, basically, those who take and change that perception, 
Take the opportunities that are given to ride an up or down market, to invest in real estate, to whatever that is, okay? That favors the bold. That is what will make you successful. There are more millionaires made during a recession than any other time, all right? And in fact, uh, as a courtesy to you guys, there was a great article, and Matt and Vikas, they're gonna, they're gonna post this for you. 18 ways to build wealth during a recession. We're gonna build that to, I'm gonna build that. We're gonna give you that link. There's a lot of really good information in there. And one of the key things to understand, as you are looking at different investments, there is only one investment vehicle that is out there that I am aware of consistently and that we teach uh, that actually is a hedge against inflation. In fact, many of our clients uh, have realized this and uh, right now they're <laughs> they're super happy uh, because they are not only uh, you know watching the appreciation and and watching that rental income and letting somebody else pay for their investment. Even interest rates today for not owner occupied which are 6.875 right okay that is still very low in the big scheme of things. In fact, uh, because he's going to throw the Fannie Mac uh, chart up there really fast for you. But here's the thing to understand, okay? It is a perception of mind, okay? Even buyers today are realizing that real estate as a home ownership is a hedge against inflation. Really? No, no kidding. And in fact, when we talk about our numbers here, look, we have actives. They're up 105%. You might go, holy crap, that's nothing. We're still like around two months of inventory. A healthy market should have four to six months. And so we are getting closer. We're getting back to having a more balanced market, which is super healthy. Did you know King County year over year had the highest uh, home price appreciation at 11.5%. No kidding. Even with interest rates going up, even with sales being down, right? 14.6% year over year. Payments down 16% year over year. Okay, well, that's, that's not unexpected, okay? One, because we had a record-centered year. <laughs> 2020 and 2021 were off the chart. In fact, you should throw those away, okay? If I could play basketball, I would have probably done a, a three-point swoosh, I guess is what, all net, I think is what they say. Anyway, you can tell they don't watch uh, basketball. Anyway, you have to understand that when we talk about the market, let's be real with the numbers. So King County, King County saw gains of 11.5% year over year. Seattle had 5.9% appreciation year over year. We didn't go down. We went up still. Uh, we didn't see double digit appreciation in Seattle, nor did we on the east side, which had uh, basically 4%, 3.9%, had 4% appreciation. One of the higher demographics for home prices okay so as interest rates went up that one saw the greater softening but prices didn't go down and then next year next year we are still going to see between four and six percent appreciation no appreciation not depreciation it just means it's going to slow down okay even Lawrence Yoon NAR's chief economist even he says even looking at he said noted housing affordability plummeted, I love that word, uh, to its lowest level since 1989. That doesn't mean that home values went down. It said affordability because of interest rates, because of cost of funds, because of the level of appreciation that we have seen over the last three years, affordability is at its 1989 levels, which was really tough. Okay, that's fine but that doesn't change the fact that it's still a great investment. And in fact, he says, with mortgage, rate, uh, mortgage rates expected to be around 6%, watch my prior videos, we're gonna hedge up closer to 7%, guys. I'm just telling you, it's coming. We're gonna drop, we're gonna bump up, now we're gonna drop back down again. It's gonna happen. But as people acclimate to this, they are gonna come back in to the market. In fact, they're already there. Buyers are already back. There is still a pent-up demand. In fact, funny enough, so I put up here three reasons to buy a home in today's shifting market. You might say, George, is that even possible? Yes, because is going to post that one, so we'll map. Uh, the, the biggest one is right here, number two. 
when we talk about homes that have sold at 100% of listed price, okay? So in May, it was 55%, okay? And in June, it was 51%. In July, it was 39%, all right, of homes that sold at uh, full price. When we talk about having multiple offers in May, uh, it was an average, I think it was 4.2? Yep, 4.2. 3.4 in June, and then we had uh, 4.8 in, uh, in July. Okay, why? Well, because as you guys learned, as we hit our seasonal, hey, we're, we're gearing up post July 4th all the way through to the end of August, we're going to hit a pretty aggressive market. And we did. Look at our seven day running average. This has been actually closer to the 700s until yesterday. We took a massive jump in uh, uh, with new on market, which actually helped here and uh, didn't help there, but helped here a little bit, which shows you how much uh, sellers were not coming on in, in July, and poof, here, here they just showed up on Friday. Um, Pendant's still up at uh, 1,342, and then, of course, Soldier at 992. When we look at month over month, look, we had no inventory change. That's a rare. <laughs> and in fact, we only had 0.7 months of new homes uh, coming on, right? And then, of course, we're down both in Pendant and in Sold. All right. Not uncommon. Why? Because this is uh, August 1 to uh, no, uh, to September 1 uh, through uh, the 9th. Today's the 9th. Today's the 10th. So it was the 9th. Okay. Well, we have the beginning of yes. As many of my clients let me know. I can always tell who listens to the video because they talk to me about the vacation trifecta. All right. So we've gone through Labor Day. Okay. Uh, well, that was the first part of September. No different than the numbers in July. And if you look at the first, you know, 10 days of July, July and September look very similar because, yes, they have big uh, federal holidays, right? July 4th versus uh, Labor Day. Big holiday weekends. But is it over? No. Why? We have students getting back in school. We have uh, schedules adjusting. And then uh, we get into the people that says, hey, we got uh, sunny days still. We got to get our last minute vacation in uh, before it turns cold because fall is coming, rain's coming, gray days are coming, leaves are going to fall off the trees. That's true. And so they take a step away. However, smartest buyers are staying active right now. Why? Because of this reason right here and this reason right here. Reason number three is we have more inventory. Sellers are more flexible. Okay. And when you take a look at the last few months, and you can see sellers are adjusting to that market. That's absolutely fabulous, right? Listen, when you take a look back, uh, and even uh, when we get uh, and we take a look at uh, real estate, both as an investment and as a home, right? There's very few things that hedge against inflation like real estate, okay? Now, understand real estate is also a long-term investment or should be, right, five plus years as an investment, okay? I keep single family homes for five years or less, two and a half tenants, I cycle them through, people say why? Because then we hit a different market trend, uh, so we're hitting a peak of market to peak of market, I reinvest in a multifamily. Am I doing that again today? The answer is yes, why? Because people who invest during a recession always and on top, more millionaires are made during a recession than any other time. In fact, there were more millionaires created after the Great Depression than any other time in history, if I remember correctly, if I have that quote right. But understand, only those people that understand and can change their perception. It doesn't have to be real estate. There's a lot of different things. In fact, the, the uh, 18 ways to build wealth during a recession, which that link will be provided for you, understand. They give a lot of different recommendations. And believe it or not, real estate is one of them. And we can talk about how that benefits you. Because here's the thing. Right now, when people are pulling back, right now when you have tenants and people who are kind of on the edge, oh, do I buy a house, do I not? Now I'm gonna rent. That makes people like me super happy. Because our rent prices, people were saying, you know, hey, George, how come uh, people are predicting, you know, rental prices to go up another 12% year over year? Uh, for this very reason, people get this cloud in their brain that they need to start contracting, right? They need to start hoarding their dollars, which 
does nothing for you because the dollar value is going down. Okay, it's like your 401k, unless you're doing double digit appreciation in your 401k and getting contributions from your employer, you're losing money. Your dollar is worth less today than it was yesterday and will be worth less tomorrow. So you are losing dollars. Whereas a real estate property, hey, we're gonna see 11.6 uh, in King County today, 3% to 5% in a lot of other areas, what we call the micro demographics, right? Uh, and then when you take a look at the fact that we're gonna see four to six percent appreciation next year, plus if you look at rental properties, looking at a 12% appreciation year over year, as far as additional income, that's real dollars earned, plus depreciation of the asset, appreciation and increased rental. Look, I can outperform the stock market almost every single time. In fact, historically, real estate always outperforms it. That's why all of your high net worth folks own real estate. No kidding. It's the only thing that hedges against inflation because it goes up with inflation. It helps to, to give you a balanced portfolio. Keep that in mind. Many of our clients actually already understand that, have already made the move and making an additional move just like I am, and you should be. Talk to somebody about it who's familiar with real estate as an investment, your financial planner. Hey, John Easley is a great guy to talk to. Uh, so is Rod Tucker. Give both of these guys a shout out. Talk to them about it, okay? Now's the time that if you have $500 a month you can set aside, do it. Reinvest it. Why? Because as stark values go down and things like that, you have an opportunity to, to absolutely capitalize and write that up. Why? Because be bold in your investments for the future. I'm not talking short-term investment. I'm talking long-term investments. Okay. Uh, one of the stocks we looked at was Rivian. Okay. Uh, yes, it's a car I'm looking at buying, but more importantly, when they hit kind of a floor of 13, $15 a share, Hey, um, we bought a few, we bought a few shares. Why? Because I know, just like it did with Tesla, they took their beatings, they made some dumb comments, dumb decisions, and the market responded accordingly. But now they're on the rise again, okay? Buy them at 13, I think they were, they were at 37 yesterday, okay? Look at that, you, you already doubled, but did it, did it favor the bold? I don't think that's a statement, but nonetheless, that is the way it happens. Same thing in real estate. Real estate is softening right now. It's not as competitive. It allows you still that opportunity to get in there. Why? Because as a long-term investment, real estate is awesome. It's the only investment that I know of that hedges against inflation. Just saying. If you, if you disagree with me, post it. Let's talk about it. And uh, we'll have a really great conversation. All things considered, hey, look, we're doing great. Mortgage rates today are about 4.75. Uh, the Freddie Mac is uh, 30 year, uh, 5.89. Are interest rates going to continue up? Yes. Are they going to hit the sevens? Yes. They are. Will they come back down probably in Q1 of 2023? That's first quarter. More than likely, I'm predicting that they're going to hit in the high fours uh, and there's going to be uh, quite a bit of a surge. Why? I think buyers are going to continue to realize the value in with the economy. Everything's going to kind of start to shake out. Feds are going to raise rates again has nothing to do with mortgage rates. But when feds raise the rates, people pull back, they go into bonds and mortgage-backed securities, mortgage rates tend to come down. Yes, I think they're gonna do another 0.75 increase uh, this month in September. I think it's gonna happen. Uh, is it a bad thing? Hey, you know what? Credit cards, HELOCs, home equity line of credits for those of you, uh, your uh, car uh, mortgages, business loans, what banks lend to each other, that's the fed rate, okay? And then uh, banks take, you know, prime, that's what we call prime lending, right? Uh, prime plus two, prime plus two and a half, prime plus one and a half, depending on your lender, okay? That is how they make their profit, all right? So the question is, will a recession, can a recession make you a millionaire? And the answer is yes, okay? If every seven to 10 years you look at real estate, uh, typically doubles, and that has happened historically, and people say, no, that can't continue to happen. I've been saying that since I was a kid. Oh, real estate can never increase. You know, it never double every seven to 10 years. And it does, okay? Uh, it just, it is what it is, okay? So when you take a look at it, if you buy a $500,000 home today, which that would definitely have to be down south, 
Uh, Puyallup is, for all of those of you, that is a great area for single family investment and uh, multifamily. Uh, North Tacoma, absolutely fabulous place to consider. Make sure you're looking at those because they're changing the zoning in North Tacoma. Uh, they're doing a more intense density uh, uh, rezone, uh, much like what Seattle did 20 years ago. You want to do something? Buy into Seattle 20 years ago, buy into Tacoma today. North Tacoma. There you go. There's free advice for you. Uh, what would the attorney say? Uh, this is only my opinion. <laughs> and you should make sure you do your own homework. There we go. I did the, the attorney disclosure. If you have any questions, post them. We'd love to hear from you guys. It's absolutely awesome sauce. Uh, we get back to you within about 30 minutes. Listen, this is just really great information. It's going to allow you the ability to get really to, to noodle on what are the best options for you guys. Here's the key thing. The message today, do not sit on your dollars. Reinvest your dollars, especially now as a recession is driving some corporate stocks and whatnot down. What a great time to capitalize and ride them back up because it's going to come back up again, and it always does. All right? All right. If you have any questions, again, post them. Make sure you subscribe and save. In the meantime, it's a beautiful day out there. It's a little smoky, a little ashy out there. So watch your ash. <laughs> anyway, I will see you guys on the next video. Have a beautiful day. Take care. Stay safe.